So transitivity is, is related to our next concept, which is clustering. And what clustering is, is simply a clustering coefficient measures the extent to which nodes tend to cluster together, right, or be grouped together. A cluster defini definitionally is a group of nodes that are more connected with each other than they're connected with everybody else. And clusters can be really important for several reasons. So for instance, distinct clusters can be bottlenecks of information or bottlenecks of, in a diffusion process. So imagine if there's a disease spreading and again, this network is not evenly connected and we have these clusters, the disease might come into the cluster it does lots of bad stuff to the cluster, lots of people get sick, but it might not necessarily do all that much in the network if the cluster is only tied very loosely to the rest of the network. So say for instance, it only has uh, one or two ties to the main component or the rest of the network. So that disease might play out in that cluster and not have any other effect. It might be devastating for the cluster, but not for everyone else. But in another situation, say for instance, I'm trying to foster collaboration or innovation, these clusters might actually bottleneck good ideas that, are that A, are being generated in that cluster, they're not going out, or B, there might be great ideas that are circulating around that aren't going into that cluster. And actually, we can look at clusters, and if we're looking at how people interact, they are often indicative of sort of groupthink situations, because we're all highly connected to each other, uh, we share some kind of common feature, and that can lead to ideological um, homophily or uniformity. Like, we all have the shared ideas, and we reinforce those ideas, and we can have an echo chamber. Clusters can also be really interesting in an, a bigger uh, graph we can do what's called community detection which is to identify these clusters and these clusters then can give us an idea about how different parts of the network interact with each other or if there's unique communities that we might be interested in. And going back to this sort of idea of networks as variables approach, we might say, well, do people who belong to a cluster do they have unique features that influence our outcome variable? Why is it related to transitivity? Because I said, oh, it's highly related to transitivity. What's a cluster? A cluster, um, at least globally speaking, is the proportion of closed triads. So again, Jim and I have that friend, and we all are friends with each other. That's a closed triad. Over all the triads in the network, both open and closed. So networks with higher clustering have higher proportion of closed triads to all triads. Visually speaking, the uh, features that we've been talking about, the clustering could be plotted as distinct colors or um, at sized in distinct ways, but I might want to add that when we're going through this and sort of investigating more about our network, that other kinds of visualizations might be useful and helpful. So if you're tracking changes in a network over time, which might be of interest to you, just using a simple scatter plot. So for instance, has the degree of clustering changed over time? Is the network getting more uniformly connected, which might be a good story, or is it getting more clustered? Are people sort of banding off into their own little groups? And related to that would be, is that because transitivity is increasing? Well, I guess definitionally that would be the case, but like, is that happening um, among certain groups of people? and are there logical reasons why that's happening. We might also want to look at these measures as sort of a baseline and then see how the network is evolving over time to give us intuitions about if, for instance, uh, in the data that I was talking about in the lab, the NSF is trying to promote collaboration. So we'd want to look and see, well, are there changes in these network structure system level variables over time? Okay, so the final measure um, that I talked about is a kind of basic diagnostic notion about how is this network being wired is degree distribution. And actually this is sort of a nice segue to our second set of features, which are positional features. Why do I say that? Because degree refers to the number of connections that any node has. A degree distribution refers to that distribution. So how many connections does any particular person have and what's the probability of them having it? So in many networks, 
like say for instance a friendship network. The average number of friends in a school network is often hovers around 15, 20 people. And then you have sort of a steep slope going up to 20 people, so there's a proportion of people that have one or two or three friends. And then way out in the tail are people that have like 50 friends because they're super popular, right? So the shape of this connectedness can be helpful because it can give us an idea, well, you know, on average, how connected is any one person? And are those people who are super connected important in some way? Or are people who are not connected important in some way? Or are they at risk in some particular way in either setting? So for instance, when we were talking about adolescent networks and we were talking about social support, I mean, I'd be worried about the nodes that have zero or one or two connections. But on another hand, when I'm talking about community of diseases, um, I'm particularly interested in those people who are connected to 50 people because those people um, could be people that really could influence the spread of that disease. And they're also at higher risk of getting it, right, because they're connected to so many other people. So degree distribution gives us a sense of, like, overall, how is any one entity in the network, how connected are they? And that then can lead us into looking at our next set of considerations, which are positional features.